people are in their heads and are fighting to come back against it all. If you live with a passion for greatness and strength and resilience towards all obstacles that may attempt to derail you, if you are bold and aggressive in the pursuit of the things you want in life, if you are meant to overcome everything that stands in your path of reaching your goals, then you are 8 Man Strong. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Hi, this is Jim McMahon, and you're talking sports with Ryan. Segment of hour number two, hanging out with uh, CFFC fighter Max Gionis. Um Quick to just uh, get his story out of the way. So this moron decides to look at yep. his, his gas tank. Now, we've talked about that he's running out of gas. He waits till he pays the $5, goes through the toll oh, no. mm. to realize, oh, there's no gas gas station between here and Fort Lauderdale. And so I said, pull oh. over. When I get hungry, I'll eat your arm. I, I don't <laughs> care. And he brings up the, you know, the lead poisoning. Yeah, I'm and like, well, you'll get ink poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> you eat this arm. I'll still survive longer than him because I would have just, you know, chopped his arm off. Uh, Candyman, we talked about it and we joked about it off the air, but why don't you come out to it? It's just not menacing enough. It's not menacing. When I'm thinking like the candy man, yeah, it's the hustler mentality like as a, like a, as a youth, but now we're going into that horror character kind of aspect of yeah. like, I want to appear your dreams. Like I want to have those nightmares that people, when they come in the ring with me, that all they see is blood. Here's my theory on that, okay? What would be worse than getting beat up <laughs> by a guy who's coming out to Sammy Davis Jr. singing Candyman. <laughs> That's true. That's psychological you, You're talking about, now this person has to think that. Oh my God, he came out to Candyman and he just whooped my ass? <laughs> I mean, people, people take Candyman as sweet or sour kind of name, so it can go both ways even before the song as well. And, and I'm sure in today's world, Candy and Candyman could mean 50 things that we don't want to be associated That's with. That's true too, yeah. Like a well, speaking of uh, BKC King of Violence, Mike Perry's fighting Saturday night here in, in Tampa. He came out to Halo, but there was a wrong Halo. It was Beyonce's Halo. And he was walking out to the Octagon and he was like, wait, that's the wrong song. Like, ah, oh, well. Yeah. Right? At, at that point, I mean, you can't, can't say the F word, but F it at that point, you yeah, know what I mean? Right. Yeah, there's nothing you can do. I know a fighter in Ohio, in Columbus, I want to say Matt Hamill, but I could be wrong, came out to Snoopy. You know, which is also an Ohio state song. Or, and Dana's like, what is he coming out to this for? Yeah, but, you know, I... Listen, you know Dana as well as I do. I'm pretty sure Dana White approves every single walkout song. So he must have approved that. And then oh, yeah. No, it definitely got approved. Yeah, no, he approved it because he has he's hands-on in everything now, on that production. With the timing of everything, uh, 50 Cent has a song, Mini Men. And during his concert, he put uh, a Donald Trump face on his body of his, like, you know, ready to die or, or you know, Get, uh, get rich or die trying. Or Album like cover. So, yeah, I saw that. So, you know, the candy shop was a big hit for 50. So maybe you come out to the candy shop. Uh, <laughs> probably funny. more important than the gibberish that we've talked about <laughs> for the past eight or nine minutes. Uh, talk about tickets. Do you have tickets? If people are going to purchase tickets, is it better to hit you up and buy them from you than to go in on Ticketmaster or calling John Morgan? And not John Morgan, the attorney. John Morgan, the attorney. <laughs> De definitely get your tickets through my, myself. Any local fire that has uh, tickets available, go ahead and get it through them because it will be a showdown. out. So, and online, there is a service fee. Uh, so you save that service fee, but we only do have general admission tickets, us fighters. So if you guys go online to cffc.tv, you'll be able to get your VIP tickets, tables if they're not sold out as of yet. So for, for local, or they don't even have to be local, if somebody buys tickets, whether it's through you or through somebody else, will you give them a candy bar? Will you, you hook them up with some <laughs> M&Ms? Uh, so well, actually what I did this fight camp, I actually got trading cards. Trading really? cards made. So it's a photo of my last one crawling into the cage with my sponsors on the back. You will not only get a ticket, but then a signed uh, copy of a ticket, oh, uh, the awesome. trading card that's as well awesome. with that. You know, how much of that marketing is on your shoulders. I mean, do you have a manager that helps you with that, or do you do everything? Yeah, his you name's know? Daniel. <laughs> That's <laughs> a Daniel move right you and there. your wife take care of all of that stuff? So I do. I am signed to Iterum. Uh, Jason House is my manager over in uh, Vegas and yep. whatnot. So um, yeah. they do the best that they do, being from Vegas right. and whatnot. So they help me out with sponsorships, stuff like that. But as of everything locally, I've obtained those. And uh, it's just my sales hustler mentality of, like, not only do I have to put on a show, but the show performance would come with sponsorships by putting in the work in the gym then that's how you get those sponsorships and things of that nature one of my favorite questions i, I ask all of you athletes uh, craziest strangest funniest thing to ever happen during a fight something come to mind strangest thing during a fight eh, 
probably probably not during a fight, but during a wrestling match. I mean, you just get kids that that stink and don't don't wash, oh, yeah. don't wash themselves like during wrestling tournaments. But other than that, I can't really think of a. But, but don't story. some some of those athletes do it on purpose? Yep. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Because that's what you know. I know some NFL players that would purposely. Does it soil themselves? Yeah. Is that how we say it? You know, because then you don't want to tackle a dude that's all, you know, and it's done on purpose. Yep. You know, it's mine, you know, the warfare that you're talking about. So, you know. Yeah. Did Julie Keddy ever tell you her story about her fight in Russia? No. She got got, got a girl in a triangle choke and it turned out to be uh, like a sitting on top triangle choke. And she, oh. she uh, went <laughs> by accident on the girl's face. <laughs> 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 yeah, that happens, though. That's why you never wear white white shorts in the octagon yeah. in the cage. Oh, what um, wow. what do you do, yeah. do for work? Or, you know, Golden tell us a little bit about now. you. So, I mean, <laughs> my, my wife, bless her heart, uh, Linda. She she's been nothing but supportive and told me to quit my job two years ago to focus really? on this full time. So I had my last amateur fight. What was it? Shoot, twenty twenty one, end of twenty twenty one. And then May, I was still working, uh, doing the solar roofing and things like that. And then she was like, you're gone from 6 in the morning all the way to 10 at night. The money, I mean, if you just focus your full, put everything in the basket with this, like, we could really make this happen. So we ended up moving back in with a father-in-law. He let us rent out a room for like 500 bucks a month, and then we just started stacking up, put our money in the right place. Now we're blessed with a beautiful home. I teach people on the side as well, but mainly the sponsorships that really do help me out. So uh, you're all in. All in. You know, your, your family is all in. All in. All in. Uh, Father-in-law, mother, everyone is supportive, and they sell tickets. Like, I'll give them a handful of tickets, boom, they go sell it. Or they'll try to get me sponsorship deals as well with people that they know. So it's... It really does take a village, and I believe with the support system that I do have, this sky's the limit. How many times you train a day? Twice. Twice. Now, the last CFFC fight I, I went to, I, it was in San Diego, and Rob was there, obviously, but Dana White and uh, Matt Serra and Dean Thomas came. They were doing their finding a fighter. Uh, how, how many opportunities do you get from CFFC to enha enhance your career? Maybe, maybe if Dana White shows up and says, all right, I want that guy in the UFC. I mean, it could be this next fight. As long as I put on a spectacular show, there's no reason why um, I'm not mentioning uh, the talks, as one would say, especially for flyweights. Uh, they, they're they more in need of flyweights versus bantamweight stack, featherweight stack. Every division, uh, for the most part, except for heavyweight and middleweight, and uh, flyweights are not as much stack. So hopefully by um, this time next year, not only would I be in the UFC, but hopefully get a dub. Awesome. Uh, how is, and discipline's not the right word, and I know as soon as I ask this, Daniel's going to call me and, I probably shouldn't, but back when I used to go, training would start at eight, but really wouldn't start till eight forty-five. Has it gotten better? Has it? If is it at eight? Does it start at eight oh five now? Yeah. Okay. It does. It I does. used to harass them. I'm, I'm driving over. I want to get home. You know, I want to do. But I'm not a fighter. I just want to come <laughs> and work out. You know, get a sweat on. You know, do some cool stuff, and they get home. Our, our training starts at 8. It really starts at 9.45. I get home at 2. Now, now it's morning session. That lasts like an hour and a half, two hours. Then you get from 6 to 9. Just straight work. Just straight work the entire time. So it's And no AC. Easy. So go in your car. Read the index. If it says over 100, plus the small amount of space we're in, the heat oh, is brutal. No AC because Anthony doesn't want to run it? Or we're actually not at Tigers World. You're not there anymore. Mm -mm. Oh, we okay. actually uh, closed that down, so we uh, ended up funny you mentioned him. We're that was a joke, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> for being a brother. Like a training partner. So we're off at his or George Road now. Okay, so even further. See, tell Daniel that's why I don't come. Because it's even <laughs> further, further of a drop. Max, we want to thank you. Goes, like, I just want to say your story is really inspiring to me. Uh, my wife and I have had the same He's going to quit his job now, too. Well, I've already quit my job. <laughs> I just don't have anything to put my time into. So, uh, so but congrats to your wife and, and for making that decision. Commitment. Thank you. Good luck to you on the series, and uh, you got a fan in us. Yeah, thank you, guys. We I appreciate it. Meeting Linda on Friday. And then there's more of a story to be told too. Like sure. the crazy. This is only the next Wednesday is Victory Wednesday. So we bring yep. fighters back, so Victory Wednesday. I don't want to run out of time for coming out here. We're going to hook you up with uh, some bucked-up energy drinks since awesome. you haven't made uh, the call to get yours yet, thank as you. well as a package from Ape Man Strong. So well, thank you, Randy. I appreciate time. your time. Let's, thank you, guys. Let's go hit uh, the top of the hour break. You, when we return, he is your co-main event, UFC on Saturday. Brad Tavares. We'll be right back.